So today is a Transformer Tuesday, but we don't have much news to talk about from the Hasbro front. Pretty much a digital uh, crossover with Beyblade with Transformers and some Super 7 information. Probably stuff we'll talk about later this week as it develops or maybe even on the Saturday Night live stream this weekend. But today what we're going to do today is yet again another Transformer Slag podcast Patreon listener question. Once again, if you want to be part of the Transformer Slag podcast Patreon Help support the podcast. Let us know we're doing a half-decent job here in the Transformer world, keeping you educated, entertained, and informed in our hobby. Patreon.com forward slash protoman, or check the pinned comment or the description below. Give it a clickety-click. Come join us on the Patreon. What does it get you? What does it get you if you join the Patreon and send us your hard-earned money and let us know that we're doing good? We're doing Primus's work. Well, <clears throat> Gets your name in the end credit scroll at the and at the end of every segment moving forward. Access to our exclusive Discord where we share the no, share the news, share lore, save money on your hobby. We have the sales section where we post all the latest uh, sales that are happening in the Transform world, so you don't pay full price for your Transformer product. And of course, depending on what tier, you might get a little something something in the mail. Access to our giveaways that we do every single week in the live stream. Get some free Transformer toys sent to you in the mail. Or ask the Patreon listener question. And we have a Patreon listener question here from our Primus tier patron. <clears throat> Chosen one by Primus. Space Ghostal. How you doing, Space Ghostal? And Space Ghostal wants to know, Dear Proto Man, my next question involves a little bit of backstory that probably is pretty common in our fandom. When I, when I saw the 1986 movie, I was pretty young. See photo attached. And we're going to see a nice little Christmas photo attached here. We'll post it on the screen that he sent me. <clears throat> I hated Hot Rod for getting Optimus Prime killed in the movie. Ooh. Already coming out fire in here. Um, I am the kid on the left. My brother is the one on the right. I refuse to own I refuse to own a figure of Hot Rod or Rodimus for the longest time. My mother is actually the one is was actually one of the ones who wrote to Hasbro upset that they killed off my childhood hero Optimus Prime. Fast forward now and now Hot Rod is my second favorite Autobot. Funny how the perspective of a character changes over the years. Where do you think that controversy is today? Ha have the years been kind to old Hot Rod? What was your take on it back then? Keep up Prime's work, Space Ghostal. <clears throat> well, Space Ghostal, thank you for the uh, Patreon listener question, being a longtime supporter. Uh, I'll start with your last part here. And by the way, thank you for the photo. I love that photo. Um, you can see there that uh, his brother got a Rodimus Prime figure, so he got the good deal. Uh, but it looks like Space Coastal there, he got uh, he got Octane, which is it's a pretty good figure, too. Not the best of the Triple Changer. I still lean towards the original 1985 uh, Astro Train being probably the best of all the original six of that era of toys. Uh, but uh, Octane's pretty good, too. So anyways, uh, to, I'll start with the last part of your question. Uh, what was my take back then? Well, I was a special case uh, in the sense that I didn't know what Transformers was going into the theater back in 1986. My neighbor was two years older than me, <clears throat> and he kind of steered the ship, let's just say, in terms of what movies we went to see when we were kids. He was like, oh, we're going to go check out this movie, Lethal Weapon. I'd be like, okay, I have no idea what that is. I wanted to go see the Ninja Turtle movie, but sure, you know, or something. <laughs> it was just always how that was, and, uh, you know... When you're the young kid and the older kid wants to go check out something, you go, sure, why not? So we went to see the 86 movie with his mom, and uh, I didn't know what Transformers was. So the impact of Optimus Prime dying and the blame being put on Hot Rod was not really a factor in me, considering the fact that Hot Rod really was the star of that movie, and it was his journey and his story. So it's kind of different for me. And and this this also has a lot to do with the fact with uh, perspective, the controversy, like so, like you say here, um, what do you think of the con that the controversy is like today? Uh, how have the years been kind of Hot Rod? Here's a reality: most people who blame Hot Rod for the death of Optimus Prime and and felt bad about it were kids that grew up with those characters before seeing the '86 movie. <clears throat> so that means it had to be someone that watched Transformers between '84 and '85 before seeing the '86 movie to truly get that effect 
The problem is, is that's only two years of this entire brand that's been around for almost 40 years. If you were a fan that came in 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, if you were a 90s kid and started with Beast Wars, if you were a 2000s kid and you started with Armada, if you were a 2010s kid and you started with the Michael Bay movie stuff, if you're just joining us today and your first Transformer series was Cyberverse or Earthspark, you don't really have that perspective because you know Hot Rod from all this other media up to this point. And if anything, the that one moment of Megatron holding the gun to, Hot, to Optimus Prime and Hot Rod interfering was just a footnote, if anything. So while initially, especially I remember looking back, you know, being part of the early f online fandom of Transformers, let's say, uh, you know, online message boards, the BBS boards and, and the uh, ATT, the Alt, Alt Toys Transformer boards back in the day, of 96 97 when it really started to pick up because of beast wars and the fandom was there in a larger numbers and when i mean larger i mean maybe 200 people maybe could barely fit a bach on back then um it was different the hate was either you hated wheelie because it was kind of hip to hate wheelie kind of like the jar jar binks of the transformer uh, fandom was wheelie or you hated uh, hot rod and to a mild extent, those same people that hated Hot Rod probably also hated Beast Wars because of how different it was. Truck, not monkey. So, but they were a minority because Hot Rod did a lot of other cool stuff. Not, not, number one, the 86 movie is awesome. And considering it is his story, that right away uh, has a lot to do with it. You know, when you think about how the 86 movie really is the pinnacle of Generation 1 in terms of animation, storytelling, music, and everything like that, and the main character of that movie is Hot Rod, it's very hard to rag on him when he's carrying that ship that everyone celebrates today. Um, so, and not to mention if you were someone who was reading the comics in the UK, Hot Rod Rodimus Prime was a big deal there because they, they got a lot of books that we didn't get. He had a, he had a, a pretty not a significant role but a big enough role in the marvel version of the of the usa books that uh you know wasn't uh too controversial heck if you read the original marvel run of the 1986 movie adaptation hot rod didn't even interfere you know because that was the original script in the original script hot rod didn't interfere and guess what optimus still died so it didn't really make much of a difference and when people start to realize that in that kind of what if scenario you know, Hot Rod wasn't really too much to blame. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things, too. Visually, he's he's a cool design. He's a red sports car with a flame on it. He's, you know, Judd Nelson did a very good job fleshing out that character. So his initial run in that 86 movie played him out to be a really cool kind of character. And Dick Gautier taking the reins afterwards with uh, season three, which really, in my opinion, wasn't his best outing, but still, you know, did its job. I think that... Um, it didn't hurt that character. And not to mention, uh, while it's not really worth mentioning too much, uh, in Japan, he was much beloved Hot Rod, Rodimus Convoy in this case, because Japan was kind of conditioned that every year you kind of get a new set of characters. You look at Gundam in Japan. You look at the Power Ranger franchise known as Tokusatsu or Sentai in Japan. You look at Ultraman, Kamen Rider. I could go on and on. They're, they were very conditioned that every year you get a new cast of characters, a new a new group, new toys, new this. So losing the old characters, the old toys, wasn't something that was a big loss. They were always used to a new rollout of characters. Where in America, it was Optimus Prime forever, Ninja Turtles, the four, four guys forever. Heck, even Power Rangers. The way Power Rangers was handled here initially was they wanted to keep those Dinozord characters and those actors forever. Now we have, similar to with Sentai in Japan, we have a rollover of new people every year. So Japan was very welcoming of Rodimus Convoy. He was their new leader character, you know, and, and they loved him. Um, it's, it's something where he wasn't hated over there, and be, probably because he wasn't hated over there, that led to the Hot Rod Rodimus character appearing more so in the future afterwards. When you, when you get to something like, let's say, Star Convoy and, and Operation Combination and that later G1 stuff, Hot Rod makes his appearance as a Micromaster. You know, that was a very Japanese decision to do something like that. 
and keeping him around in Headmasters and still popping up in the manga once in a while. And then when you fast forward even more and you get to something like, let's say, Car Robots, there's a Hot Rod homage with Speedbreaker, a.k.a. Sideburn there, Japanese Choice, because that was a Japanese exclusive series initially. Uh, when you look at Armada, there's the Hot Rod homages. You look at Energon, Hot Rodimus is in that series. You look at Cybertron, there's Hot Rod homages in that. Japan really loves that character. So his consistent appearances, or whether it be spiritually or actually the character, uh, also kind of helped his PR in a lot of ways. So it's something where he's a really great character. He is. And I think that as the years progressed, there was a lot of people that weren't around to experience the death of their hero, but instead hearing about that badass movie where Optimus dies and then Hot Rod is the star of that movie. So people have very different perspectives. And like I said, it's such a big rubber band where only two years represent people who could have grown up with that and the rest of it, you know, if you were someone that watched the Michael Bay movies, you know, the, it's a very different situation. You know, you might hate, uh, I don't know, the, the Ice Cream Twins or something, you know, something, it's a kind of a different thing. So I, I think a lot of fans today, they love Hot Rod just because he's an awesome character. He's a cool design. The voice actor who played him was also a, a cool actor and cool design and, and everything like that. I got design, but a cool character, you know. It's he has a lot of things going for him. And then when you fast forward into comic books today, whether it be the IDW stuff and just how he's depicted in any kind of fiction, even the Cyberverse version, uh, there's a lot of love for him. And I think that that's where that kind of comes from, is that while he might have had this one hiccup moment in history, a lot of people see it from a different perspective. And, and the people today who blame him for killing Optimus Prime. I could understand that, you know, from that perspective. Yeah, he got in the way and Prime got shot. And that means he's partially responsible for killing Optimus. All right. But then you have all this stuff that proves otherwise. You know, I, I love those Marvel books because it's kind of like, you know, Marvel used for years. Marvel used to do the what if comic books. People today are familiar with what if the TV series on Disney Plus, but it was a comic book series forever. And in a lot of ways, I looked at that original film adaptation, uh, excuse me, not film, ad comic book adaptation of the film of the 86 movie, that original Marvel comic book three issue run. And I look at it as a what if story. What if Hot Rod didn't interfere? Guess what? Prime would have died anyways. Didn't make a difference. So it's something where I don't have the hate for him because I love that character. And I know how what the alternative would have been and it still would have been uh, the same result. Combined with the fact that everything he's done afterwards is super cool, super awesome, great design, great toys. Uh, every time he has a figure, and there we do the fan voting for the you know Transformer figure of the year or something, he always makes it in the top ten or something with the fans. They always love his design. He has a very cool design. That big yellow spoiler, the flame on the hood, the a red car is always cool. Red cars are always cool, and then you combined it with that cool personality. You can't knock it down. You really can't. Where, you know, where's Wheelie's redemption story? <laughs> you know, just, just recently with the, uh, I don't know who wrote uh, the Last Bot Standing book, but someone cr clearly didn't like Wheelie in that book. You know, and I, I don't hate Wheelie. I think Wheelie is, you know, Wheelie is Wheelie. It's, it's something where it's like, I, I don't possess any kind of ill will or hate for that figure either, or that character. Um, But it's just like, I think that's, you know, as it stands, people love Hot Rod. They love him today, and considering a large chunk of the fandom didn't grow up with Transformers in 84 and 85, um, they don't come from that perspective, and they're able to have a different perspective, and I think that's what ends up happening with it. So I kind of hope that answers that a bit, and uh, props to your brother for getting a mint in box uh, G1 Rodimus Prime, because uh, while well, you got the Octane, I think he's the one that won out in the end. <laughs> But yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Do you think, do you think uh, Hot Rod gets his due hate that he deserves uh, the hate for killing Optimus? Or was it a giant cosmic plan? Was it always meant to be? A giant poeticness to it, that it was always meant to be because he is the chosen one. Chosen by Primus to be the one who will one day 
rise from the ranks and light their darkest hour. So if anything, we were supposed to have a divine irony that he would be involved with the slaying of Optimus Prime, a.k.a. one of the original 13's descendants. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Either way, let me know what you think. And again, thank you, Space Ghostal, for a great Patreon listener question. And if you want to be like Space Ghostal and ask a Patreon listener question, or you just you just want to support the podcast and just help us out here, again, join the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash protoman, or check the pinned comment or description below. And like I always say, rock out with the robots in disguise, and I'll see you later.